there, and welcome to episode two of season two of the Nova Scotia Kitchens podcast, Austin's Rolled Biscuits. I'm Sherry Graham, and on today's show, you get to visit in my good friend Austin's cheerful Dartmouth kitchen with me. Austin and I met many years ago through our blogs when she was living in Toronto, editing recipes for Canadian Living Magazine. You'll hear all about our opinions on nuts and baked goods, what you can read on post-its in Austin's cookbooks, hello Elizabeth May, us interrupting each other, and where to find the best biscuits, other than Austin's of course, in the HRM, and also some really great biscuit making tips. One of the things that Austin talks about in the podcast is the idea of objects carrying the stories of our lives. I thought it would be really fun to ask readers and listeners to send in pictures of your kitchen items that have great stories behind them. You can do this a few ways. You can tag Nova Scotia Kitchens in your Instagram post with a picture of your object and the story in the caption. You can email novascotiakitchens at gmail.com with a write-up and picture of your item. Or, best of all, you can record a voice note of the story on your phone and email that along with a picture of your item to novascotiakitchens at gmail.com. I'm hoping to include some stories in future podcasts, and I'm really excited to have a way to connect with you guys and to see some little snippets from your kitchens too. So, on to the recipe. I will talk you through the recipe, which is barely a recipe, and I feel like anybody who can, anybody who cooks has probably made something like this. Although I learned recently that I am um, like not everybody I know just randomly puts food together. That is true. There are a lot of reheaters and assemblers and and, and sort of and recipe like recipe followers. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize, like, I mean, because I spent five years editing recipes and working down the hall from a test kitchen, I didn't realize how much I was learning from that. You know, just being exposed to that and mm-hmm. really learning about how recipes go how together. Yeah. So that was at Canadian Living. That was at Canadian Living. Back in the day. That was when we met. It was when you were working there, right? Yeah, I'm not trying to think. I can't remember if, because I know we met, like, via our blogs. Yeah. And I can't remember if I, I think that it, we made the connection after I left Nova Scotia. Yeah, you were in Toronto. You know, I spent a lot of, I took a cooking class just to kind of get an idea of. Oh, what kinds of things did you make? Uh, it was, Great. it was basically like French cuisine 101, and we basically just made stock, stock and soup. And, nice. and, but you know, it was, it was really useful because it was like, here are, uh, it was opportunities to learn your life skills. Yeah. And, and we made some basic things and, you know, French cuisine has the mother sauces. Yeah. And once you learn those, then, then really you can do anything. Once you know the mechanics. Uh, tea? Sure. I've got... I shouldn't have any caffeine or I won't be able to last through the basketball game. I'll just, oh, my heart might explode. <laughs> Would you like to try this? Um, here, smell this. This is my friend Julie uh, Rosefall, Shipston Designs. Mixed this oh. based on a sage blend. She tried all of these things like peppermint and licorice. And I think this is the, uh, I, specifically, I think this is the Aveda tea blend. Because I have also made my own. It is licorice, fennel, basil, and mint. And like I some? remake my own. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're kindred spirits. Shift the signs. I'm gonna track you down. <laughs> I know I can. On Instagram. <laughs> and Julie is a fan of your podcast. No. So hi Julie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's fantastic. So, oh, that's awesome. Um, yes, I know we connected a little bit on Instagram, but yeah. Um, now that I know she's also a tea copier. <laughs> <laughs> she is one of the greatest creative minds I know in Nova Scotia. Oh, there you go. Thank so, you. oh, and I'll give you um, 
a little bowl that you can put your strainer in. Oh, and man. if you are like, oh, these mini needles are harshing my vibe, but just put them wherever. Did you put Don't, any needles in my tea? I didn't, would, but like all those bags are full of knitting needles. I should maybe say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's one of the things I really like about Instagram is that I'm connected with all these I know. smart women across North America. It's pretty fantastic. And around the world. I should not slight my... <laughs> The English and Scottish. But yeah, so that, like, between that and just reading recipes all day long, every day, five days a week, mm -hmm. for five years. Yeah, because you were doing copy editing for those, right? Yeah, yeah, and then I eventually worked up and was um, sort of the maybe second or third editor working on the food stuff. So we had one lady who had been there for a long, long time, and then her protege who did other things and then I kind of came in and was helping them. Gotcha. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, so I took that class and I think that just taking that class was really helpful in terms of giving me the, the really basic knowledge. It's like, it's like with, with learning a basic vocabulary mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, learning how to knit and purl. Yeah. Once you do that, then you, you can do anything. Yeah. So if you learn these five or six basic things, then you can kind yeah. of, I would have, yeah, I should have taken a baking class because I think that would be a good compliment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because you have to be so much more scientific about baking. Yeah. You know, you can't toss it together and hope it works. <laughs> yeah. There are basic ratios that seem to work, um, depending on what you're making. Right. That seems to help, um, but with baking, for some reason, I don't know, I am much less willing to spend seven dollars on a pound of butter <laughs> to experiment and then have it not work. Yeah, yeah. So butter is a precious thing. <laughs> it is. It, oh, no, it's on sale this weekend. Land <laughs> butter. <laughs> I was just gonna say. So my dad has this uh, little thing he does whenever he sees the butter on sale in the flyers. He yeah. sends me an email. So the other day, he said, and all it said, butter, three dollars superstore. That's it. No queries, no capitalization, nothing. It's my little butter alert, so I now have to go pick some up. That is fantastic. That's really good, though. We usually get a lot when it's out, so we just keep it in the freezer and then <clears throat> yeah, have it to use. So <laughs> well, yeah, and you because you're cooking for everybody, for everybody, you go through a lot more of it. Than, I mean, I go through more of it than I should, but. <laughs> That's not a real problem. No. Okay, so what I'm doing <laughs> is I had a big yellow onion, which I cut into eighths and put in this bowl. Yeah. And then feeling very brave, but also knowing that I don't have any meetings this week after lunch, uh -huh. <laughs> I put in uh, <laughs> most of a head of garlic. Yeah. Peeled and smashed because I'm lazy and that's how I peel garlic. I just yeah. smash it and then pick the paper off. <laughs> And now I am chopping one and a half sweet potatoes, one that I bought for the purpose of, and half that I just found in my fridge and was like, ugh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And you could probably stick in whatever else, too, like you could do. Oh, yeah. This is a really, I mean, literally anything, right? If you yeah. So I'm going to add, I've got a butternut squash, and I'll do some carrots. Uh... But potatoes, parsnips, you had some gross celery that uh, throwback you had left over from not making tuna sandwiches. <laughs> oh, celery and tuna salad. Well, yeah. that's, tuna, actually, I did manage to eat tuna casserole once. Oh. I, but tuna in general is not my favorite thing. Straight out of the can, possibly okay. But with mayonnaise, it kind of... Ooh, puts me over the edge a little bit. Yeah. And crunchy celery in it, just uh, not my thing. Is that a weird like texture? You yeah. know, like the juxtaposition? Yep, it's the same with banana bread, should not have walnuts in it because the banana bread is this perfect, smooth kind of perfect texture and then it gets interrupted with walnuts. It's terrible. A carrot cake with big chunks of ginger or pineapple in it? No, oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> or <but> walnuts. <laughs> nothing should have walnuts in it. Like, walnuts. I should not have walnuts in them. <laughs> I always substitute pecans because walnuts are the worst. Oh, pecans are definitely bad. Yeah. They're the nut of Satan. So I'm cutting these in 
fairly small, well, not really small, but smallish chunks because I'm a little worried about the time. So, and I'm going to do just half of this butternut squash. So this is not butternut squash soup. This is like orange vegetable extravaganza soup. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. But you can call it squash soup. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible name. Uh, right. So then do a little bit of olive oil. This is a, so a tip that changed my life, which I'm sure you know, was to put a tray under, <laughs> see like the things I can't really read. Oh yeah, yeah. But to put a tray under the, the oil bottles. For all the drips? Yeah. Oh, it's the thing difference. I do. It's a, it's a life changer. It there, really is. That is your Nova Scotia Kitchen's tip for the day. Yes, year. there we go. And you can often find a little tray at Value Village or Frenchie's or whatever thrift store. And a couple of the ones that I have are the bottoms of butter dishes, so the top is broken. Oh, but that's they're big really ones. Smart. Like they're, they're wider than, they're like old glass ones. Like. So I tested with olive oil, I sprinkled with salt and pepper. I'm going to throw it on the baking sheet, which I've covered in parchment, which is not ideal, but because ideally you want, you know, like a metal, either foil or just a bare pan to get mm -hmm. the nice, kind of crispy. crispy, but. Ah. Easier to clean up. It is easier to clean up, <laughs> and I am lazy. So, so I'm gonna poke this until it's like a single layer situation. Perfect. And shove it in the oven at 450 until it's done. Perfect. <laughs> so until it's what, like starting to look roasted, a little caramelized on the edges, and tender, which at 450 will be. 20 minutes to 30 minutes, and I will poke around every 10 minutes if I remember. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. I will say um, that we are rushing a little bit because I am in the city for my son's basketball games, and they're in the final for provincials, and the game's starting earlier than we thought, <laughs> and Austin's going to come with me to cheer on the Yarmouth Thunder. Yay! Oh, I didn't realize that name was oh, yeah. Thunder. The thunder, I know, Amazing. I know. So we're heading over there in lots of time so we don't miss the game. So <laughs> if we're talking really fast. <laughs> and actually, hi, Philip, sweetheart. He had asked me if I would mention his name on the podcast. I thought that was so cute. That's adorable. Hi, Philip. Yeah. <laughs> <Go team. laughs> so this, I, uh, so this is my copy of Joe's Cooking, which I've had for a long time. Yeah. And which well, opens to three pages. It opens to pancakes. It opens to biscuits and it opens to apple pie. So that'll tell you. I think people are so gross. <laughs> That's great. Cookbooks should be. Well, yeah. They should look loved and used and have splatters on them and stains and. Yeah. Yeah. And they're you know and there's like random. Oh, post it. Random post it notes that say things like. Fried pies! Exclamation point. Oh yeah, that sounds <laughs> better. <laughs> I don't even know like Elizabeth May. Elizabeth May. <laughs> I don't know, this is some scribble <laughs> orchestra, <laughs> you know, so what is even happening? I don't know. Um, but I, yeah. <laughs> something I think about a lot is how, is the objects that you choose to carry with you from place to place over a lifetime, they're just objects to another person, like yeah. at a thrift store, a it's, thrift just, store, it's yeah. just a butter dish that has no top. But to somebody, you know, they looked at that and they thought, oh, that butter dish, I remember when yeah. it got, the top got knocked off the table and it broke and there was this whole story to it. And I think about that a lot because I've moved across the country a few times now and, you know, the, the way that these objects, like, carry the stories. Mm -hmm. Um, and if it's new, you're giving it a story, it, then sometimes you're picking up it and giving it a new story. I yeah. think about stuff like that, um, a lot. I mean, but yeah, so like this is, this is one of those things, right? Like this, this oh, book and nice. the way that the objects you have tell your story or help tell your story. Um, we're making soup, but biscuits are really what we're here to talk about. <laughs> and, the star of the show. Yeah. Since you're cooking for yourself, so do you tend to batch cook like on the weekend and do you mind eating the same thing all the time or do you make smaller recipes like that you'll eat for a day or two? Are you opposed to leftovers? How do you tend to cook? Do you eat out often? Do you, what do you, 
Well, that's that is interesting. So if you look like like this biscuit recipe, I cook half oh, yeah. a, I make half a recipe. Today, yeah. nobody I'm, wants to eat the whole batch of biscuits, but yeah. well, <laughs> I wants to first. It should. Really. Yeah, I do want to. <laughs> yeah, but you know, so today I'll make the full batch, and you can take some of them home and have. Them. Ooh, thank you. So, did I already give you marmalade? No. We talked about it on the internet a while ago. Oh, it's so pretty. You thank you. So, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, you can't go wrong, right? It oh, is. I love it, and I've so never made marmalade. So much work. That's why I've never made marmalade, <laughs> but I appreciate it. But yeah, it. it's totally worth it. So, and I think people know it's a lot of work, and they really like it. Yeah. So, um, right. So, a thing to know. What was it? The question was, do I back cook? I do a little bit of both. I have over the winter. I have tried to spend my Sunday. Um, Allison Sparling, who is 15 years younger than I am, she's from Halifax. She's actually came to know her because she won like best Halifax tweeter four or five years ago. Ooh. And um, by all accounts, her grandmother was a really awesome lady. And from her, and I only know her like internet wise. I don't know her like Oops. personally. But she repeats this maxim of her grandmother's a Sunday well spent brings a week of content. Oh, I like that. So over the winter, in an effort to kind of make my life easier and bring myself a week of content as often as possible, <laughs> um, I've tried to spend Sunday afternoon cooking a soup or a casserole that I could parcel out, put in the freezer, and then eat for lunch during the mm -hmm. week. You know, so and I don't mind eating leftovers because the option is you're either cooking a small meal all the time or you're eating out a lot. Yeah. And I try not to eat out a lot because it's expensive and yeah. I would rather spend my money on yarn. <laughs> so Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So this biscuit recipe is I basically follow it. You don't really need to follow like you make something enough. Yeah. You know how to make it. Yeah. Um so this one is in the Joy of Cooking called Basic rolled biscuits. Mm -hmm. And in Austin's edition, it's on page 789. The Joy of Cooking is the first cookbook I ever bought. Really? Mm -hmm. When I was in university, and I got it from, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like Columbia House for CDs, <gasps> but it was books. But yeah. So I ordered, yeah. Joy of Cooking, I still have it, and I use it often. There's a banana bread recipe in there that I really like. No waffles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always a banana <laughs> Well, it's, it's interesting. So I grew up in my house. Um, I grew up with the Better Homes and Gardens new cookbook, the, checkbook, the, the checkered, red flag. Yeah. yeah. So that the copy on the left is the copy that my mom bought me when I was leaving to go to university. Ah, uh, yeah. The copy on the right is my grandmother's copy. Ooh, nice. And you can see they're both red plaid, yeah. and I didn't know this, but they change, good. whenever they do a new edition, they change the angle of the plaid, which is neat. Oh, I didn't know that. And my mom had... Her copy that she got as a wedding present in 1971 is gold. Ooh. So it was some sort of significant anniversary. Yeah, yeah. So it's really neat. And, that you know, cool. I'm in no hurry to get her copy. Yeah. But I, I really, you know, I'd love to see yeah. the three of them together. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's cool. But, yeah. Totally not as cool, but totally awesome in my book is... Um, in one of the later seasons of Murder, She Wrote, Jessica Fletcher has the Better Homes cookbook on top of her fridge, if you look carefully. <laughs> I wonder how much they paid for that product placement. I don't know, I don't know, back yeah. in the day. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, so, so I was a, I was a red plaid, so like, that's, that's the cookbook, and so I knew somebody, and he was always like, you know, joy of cooking. <laughs> And I bought a copy so I could prove him wrong, and it turns out this is the one I use a lot. Now. Oh, there you go. But there are some things that I still go back to. For. So the full recipe is preheat the oven for, or at 450 rather. Blah blah blah. So it's two cups of flour, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and a half to three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Yeah. And so you have that in your beautiful bowl, which I've got a couple pictures yes. of. Yes, you know you are you know my passion for the for the pirates bowl. Yes, Austin has quite a collection. And uh, and I use them. Yeah. That's uh 
I try to use them. For a while, I wouldn't use them because I thought they were precious. And yeah. I thought, like, what's the point? That goes against everything that that I've been saying about you know these these objects that you acquire that are yeah. important to you and to help them live their story. Sort of. I'm not always that sentimental, but anyway. <laughs> So there you the, go. The trick with these biscuits is you so you combine your dry ingredients and then it tells you five to six tablespoons of butter. So it, that's fine and you're gonna get a really nice biscuit, but if you do more butter, you have better biscuits. <laughs> the end. Use more butter, end. it's better. <laughs> so we're gonna do eight tablespoons because we're not animals, you know. Perfect. So. Well <laughs> <laughs> yet. So eight yeah. tablespoons is half cup, which is yeah. one stick one if you buy your butter in sticks. Which I do because I am decadent. <laughs> <laughs> and because my dad does not uh, email you like my butter. He puts up butter <laughs> on sale. <laughs> I've recently um, become uh, like reconciled with my pastry cutter. Yes. So I have very strong opinions about pastry cutters. So yours is an OXO, OXO Good Grip, and it's got just the thin wire things that go in the half circle. Tell me about your pastry cutter. Well, you can see from looking at it, like this, the shape of this, the grip is good. The structural <laughs> integrity is not, <laughs> right? Like yeah. it falls apart, the butter gets stuck in the wires. Like, ugh, it's a real headache, it is not good. My mother had a wonderful one from like 1968. <laughs> that I'm jealous of. Anyway, point being, not great, but I'm cheap and I won't buy a new one. <laughs> so I, I often will use my hands. If I'm just making biscuits yeah. or scones, this is totally because I have company. But, <laughs> but if I'm just making biscuits <laughs> or scones, first thing in the morning, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you don't want to find, like, you do not want to find like a piece of nail polish. <laughs> that, <is laughs> uh, that would be so awkward. Um, I usually just use my fingers, but I've started making pies again recently yeah. and that just warms it up too much. Yeah. Um, yeah. especially if you've already got the oven going, which we have, and if you're kind of like all fired up, which I am. <laughs> Clearly. I love it. <laughs> Clearly. Um, you know, it just warms it up. And then the whole point with pastry is you want it to be nice and cold, um, because it helps those little, those little bullets of butter, the little P-shaped bullets of butter, when they melt, they leave behind a pocket of air. And that is how you get a nice flaky pastry or biscuit or whatever. Amen. So, <laughs> yeah. So you don't want to melt it with your stupid warm fingers. So, so you, this is like half cooking lesson, half note to self. <laughs> so you said your mom used pastry cutter. My mom always used a pastry blender cutter. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't or don't have them or haven't used them. So well, yeah, they'll use their fingers or they'll use knives or a fork. With two or knives, I could never like that. I can't line them up, right? Disaster. I sling flour all over the place. I tried with two knives. I was like, this is not going how it's supposed to. Be. Yeah. A lot of people use a food processor too, because then that chops through really quick. Yeah. Um, now, other than a dough, I don't think in a food processor. A food processor. That is a thing I do not have. That is a thing I'll probably never have unless mm -hmm. I somehow acquire a family of five. Because it yeah. just doesn't make sense for one yeah. person. Like, that's something about cooking for one. I don't have an instant pot. I don't have a slow yeah. cooker. I don't have a, a food processor. Because it just doesn't make sense for the way that I yeah. live. Yeah. You know, and where would I put it? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not a palatial kitchen. Yeah. So unless it was going to go over there with the spinning wheel, like, <laughs> that would be amazing if you could hook it up, like... Oh yeah, to power the spinning wheel, that would be something else. I am spinning and also chopping cabbage. It's a million dollar idea. Yeah, I'm gonna be a gazillionaire. <laughs> Get right on that. Extremely niche market. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so... So your butter's all in. Yeah, you bung this together, right? That's lovely. Yep, and I tend to go, they say peas, but you know, that's not a pea, that's a lima bean. <laughs> so, I like big chunks. Of butter, sometimes yeah. it's smaller, and it looks like sand. I now like three, so three quarters of a cup of milk. This is all pretty basic biscuit making stuff. Yes. Put it together briskly. You don't want to over mix it because then it gets all gummy. Yep. Well, if you can make a good biscuit, then you're set. Like you, because they're so good for breakfast sandwiches, for eating like soup, yeah. or having like a jam, toast, or tea. And they're so flexible, and you can put in. 
cheese and chives, or you can put in whatever, oh, a little man. cinnamon or something. Like you can the best the ham. The best biscuit in this city is at the coffee shop down by the ferry terminal uh, at Alderney Landing, and it's got ham, cheddar, and chives. Yum! And so good. <laughs> so much butter. <laughs> and I have one about twice a year as a big treat. Yeah. They are so good. If I commuted by ferry to the city, <laughs> I would have them once a week and my life would be amazing. <laughs> anyway, so you mix it together, but you don't want it to be like a ball right away. Okay. So it's pretty, it's still pretty like loose. I don't know what the word is, loose. Yeah, I guess yeah it's right. coming together, but it's not a ball. It's just loose. So Documented. Documented. <laughs> Thank you. So that's now you can get your hands involved and you can kind of bring it together. I don't know. So what I do is bring, I bring it together with my hands. So I think I think we say shaggy. It's covered. So I do that. I get a ball, and then there's always the little bits. And I do not like wasting the little bits because there's some good butter in there. So, so the key with this, so you pat it, you bring it together, you pat it into a round. And then I am not a big biscuit kneader. I am a folder and a presser, and you want to do it like six times. All right, fold and press method. I like fold it. Fold and press. And then, so I usually make a half batch. Yes. So we'll roll it out. Other people like to trim their edges. They like to do all sorts of things to make their biscuits. Uh, I'm not going to do that. What you need to know for a biscuit is that you want sharp knife because you don't want to pinch it together you want the thing that I like in a biscuit is crazy to find layers it should be like looking at a ge geological yes. yep. formation you know yeah I remember uh, going home with one of my friends from university for the weekend I was in my fourth year and I remember like we traveled down from Anaganish to Truro it was a Friday night pooped by the time I got there. And her mom made us soup and biscuits for dinner. It wasn't anything fancy, it was like canned tomato soup, which we never had at my house. So it was a little bit fancy, actually. Uh, and then her mom just made biscuits from scratch, yeah. without a recipe, just like standing there talking to us. There were about, you know, four of us had come home and she's just like, do 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 reaching in like things are coming out of nowhere and did it she had a special biscuit cutter and uh yeah and i remember thinking i, thought, I want to be able to do that yes you know uh okay so we're gonna pull a little switch real hot outcome of vegetables Ugh. yeah outcome of vegetables into the biscuits I don't brush the tops with melted butter or milk or anything because I'm basic. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's that's how you make biscuits. Very easy, but one of my ways of showing appreciation and caring for people is baking for them. Mm -hmm. And I really think that if you can do something that, you know, it only takes 10 minutes and it's not hard, but for some reason, Biscuits really make people happy. That's true. If you can do that, it's true. they... And it's you know. your work to put those together and to make it, and your biscuits take like, taste like your biscuits. And yeah. Yeah. I do appreciate that. I have made friends on Twitter because of my biscuits. Ooh. And uh, one time, uh, a, a knitter I know who lives down in Portland, Maine, texted me and she said, your biscuits look so good. Um, I've got a guy coming over for dinner and I want to impress him. Can I get the recipe? Ah. And I sent it to her and they live together now. Oh, so no. Okay. I'm Take not that. saying that they're magic, <laughs> but there we have it. Awesome. So the vegetables are out of the oven. Yeah, I'm going to poke them with a fork and see how we're doing. I'm just going to take a look at these musgoods. Yes, they look like accordions. Awesome. So excited. <laughs> Uh, so now I'm going to make a lot of noise with this awful mercy yeah. blender, and it, I will it, makes, it makes a mess, so, <laughs> and I'm going to put more liquid in because it's very thick. And that would probably depend too, yeah, on your vegetables, because sometimes you get a squash that's